Greetings and salutations loyal viewers of this channel, my name is Sean and today we got to talk about the first potentially preventable death in the city of Chicago in an area that was previously covered by ShotSpotter that happened just days after the contract was cancelled by Mayor Brandon Johnson who is under the belief that detecting gunshots in the hood is actually the product of evil white racism and we can't have it because you're an evil white racist for even wanting it. It's an absolutely tragic case according to the reporting the victim of this particular crime, a woman, was left for dead for at least a single day, although the 911 caller says that she was left in the same spot for two days. And again, ShotSpotter is meant to send not only police in response to gunshots that are detected, but ambulance services, especially in these areas, that don't call the police. So did this woman die because of the removal of the system? We will know going forward. But it's important to examine this as shootings are going to spike in and around these areas so that maybe just maybe we can do something about it now we're going to get into this but before we do i want to thank everybody who supports this channel via actualjusticewarrior.com slash join oh, give me the money give you give me the money okay well there's been a lot of concern from city aldermen and community organizations as shot spotter is set to expire at midnight tonight mayor brandon johnson announced today a city request for information to look into other possible technology systems but many are concerned about public safety while that entire process plays out after months of contentious debate among city leaders, ShotSpotter gun detection technology will officially stop being used in Chicago tonight. Alderman voted 33 to 14 earlier this week to keep the technology system falling one short of a veto-proof majority. That led to Mayor Brandon Johnson vowing to veto, effectively ending the technology that has monitored Chicago's neighborhoods for more than six years. So right off the top, it is important for you guys to know that the overwhelming majority of the Chicago City Council actually voted to save the ShotSpotter technology. However, they were just one vote short of a veto proof majority so brandon johnson the woke never prosecute anyone for anything serve the criminal before the citizen mayor decided that he was going to veto this legislation what i find incredibly obnoxious about this is the fact that the shot spotter technology contract actually expired earlier in this year it actually expired all the way back in january and brandon johnson promised because it was ineffective tech that he was going to get rid of it because oh my god think about all the evil white racism that can occur when you can detect gunshots in the hood, send police and ambulance services to those locations, and potentially save the lives of largely disproportionately black individuals that are being shot, and potentially arrest the largely disproportionately amount of black people doing the shootings. But it is important for you guys to understand that Brendan Johnson actually extended the contract through the Democratic National Convention because there were important people coming to the DNC, and Brendan Johnson did didn't want any of them to get shot and not receive ambulance services. In September, right after the DNC in Chicago, shot spotter will end. The technology alerts police in real time to locations where gunshots were fired. I feel it's very disrespectful of the mayor to make a decision like this without even the, getting the input of the community. But now that that's over and Kamala Harris has been coordinated, the idea that citizens should expect ambulance services is just an evil white racist expectation, so it has been removed. Uh, morning to you. It appears this has been the conversation for weeks, even months now here at City Hall. The mayor is now apparently looking for input about crime fighting tools. But again, ShotSpotter, that's the outgoing vendor we've been talking about, is apparently once again looking for a new contract, a new bid with the city. Now, one of the things that I find absolutely crazy and asinine about this particular story is that now that the contract has expired, Brandon Johnson is asking businesses and members of the city, members of the community, if there was some kind of technology that could replace shot spotter even though obviously the guy doesn't give a damn about that because if he wanted something to detect gunshots he would have actually kept shot spotter in place on top of that if he thought that it was ineffective here or there and he wanted to replace it with some other company that's something that you would talk about before you replace shot spotter rather than after the fact but again this is just the prelude this is just the setup because what we have today to talk about 
is a case in an area that was covered previously by ShotSpotter where a woman was left for dead who maybe just maybe could have been saved. So the headline is woman of dead for at least a day found murdered in alley previously served by ShotSpotter. And it says a woman was found shot to death in the South Side alley on Saturday morning after a resident called 911 because her body had been in the same place for about two days. Chicago cops found four shell casings in the alley, which was monitored by ShotSpotter until Brandon Johnson terminated the city's contract with the gunfire detection system earlier this week. So yeah, you have a situation right here where somebody ended up eventually calling 911. They said, hey, look, there's somebody laying down there, a body. She's been there for two days, according to the 911 call, and the police need to get over there. Ambulance services need to get over there because this person is worried that she is not around. Right. And this, by the way, cuts to the heart of the matter of why ShotSpotter was in place in the first place. It's because violence has become so normalized in places like the South Side of Chicago, gun violence, that people don't even call the police anymore. You have evidence of four gunshots and a woman on the ground in an alley, and nobody called it in. Nobody said, hey, I heard something dangerous. Please send some support, because in reality, people don't care that much in the city of Chicago. This is a normal thing in the hood and again this is why you had the technology in the first place and remember the reason why they got rid of this the justification was the Adam Toledo case which was a 100% clean and justified shooting you can see the video of Toledo and the 23 year old other gang member in the area shooting off rounds in the middle of the night in Chicago And then when police showed up, Toledo was handed the gun by the elder gang member. He decided to run away when he was confronted by the police. Rather than throwing his hands up, he drew the gun out of his pocket and tried to toss it behind him. But in that moment, a bang bang play right there, split decision that the officer has to make, he ends up pulling the trigger expecting Toledo to fire the gun upon him because remember, he came to stop him in the first place because they were firing a gun randomly in the street. Well, that shooting was treated like an instance of police brutality and it was used as the justification the impetus for Brandon Johnson in order to get rid of this system when the contract expired everybody pretended that that was not legit and now the consequences of that shooting are right here in our faces or in reality in the alleyways of the south side of Chicago 23rd Ward Alderwoman Silvana Tabaris issuing a statement today saying quote starting tonight every gunshot victim left bleeding in the streets of our city will be a a worthy sacrifice in the eyes of the mayor for his radical agenda every single one. Police responded to the 9500 block of South Avenue North at around 9.30 a.m. after a resident called 911 to report that a woman had been lying in the same spot for two days. CPD said the woman who remains unidentified had suffered gunshot wounds. Quote, did we have any shot spotters? An officer asked the dispatcher upon arriving at the scene. He quickly remembered the new reality for Chicagoans. Quote, oh, I'm sorry. We don't even have a shot spotter. Disregard guard. The woman is the first murder victim found dead this week in an area that was previously served by ShotSpotter. Alderman Peter Chico, who represents the 10th Ward where the woman's body was found, was a vocal supporter of ShotSpotter and has, as recently as last week, urged Johnson to keep the system. Quote, I've used ShotSpotter. I've seen what happens. I've seen it works, Chico said, recalling the technology helping him find wounded gunshot victims despite no one calling 911. Quote, that body I saw there many, many times, we cannot put a price tag on that. So you have a situation right here where this area was previously covered by shot spotter technology. Somebody gets shot, this detector would have picked up this gunshot, would have deployed automatically ambulance and police services to the area, and maybe, just maybe, this woman would have survived this particular encounter. Now, we also have other instances of gunfire, again, in the under a week since they've gotten rid of this technology technology since Brandon Johnson vetoed the resolution to keep this technology. But in those particular instances, two individuals survived. But when we go to the article, it also goes to support what we have in terms of issues with getting rid of this system in these particular neighborhoods. At least two other victims survived being shot this week in areas previously served by ShotSpotter, even though nobody called 911 to report the gunfire. As of 12.01 a.m. on September 23rd, 2024, Chicago terminated 
terminated its relationship with ShotSpotter, a gunfire detection system deployed in 12 of the city's most violence-impacted neighborhoods. Mayor Brandon Johnson stubbornly refused to reconsider his decision to dismantle ShotSpotter, even though the vast majority of aldermen, many citizens, victims' advocates, and his hand-picked police superintendent requested that it remain in place. This reporting series is now named Brandon's Bodies, and it seeks to document cases of shooting victims and police investigations that should have benefited from the detection technology. Mayor Johnson announced today that the city is now looking into other avenues, requesting information on different technology systems. The mayor says those options will center around investing in better monitoring capabilities and community-based solutions. Mayor Johnson also issuing a statement saying in part, the ultimate goal is to deploy resources on the most effective strategies and tactics proven to accelerate the current downward trend in violent crime. We have to explore better options that save more lives. So yeah, we're going to keep a prize of this list. We're going to check back on it from time to time so that you guys can see for yourself all the different various instances where people are shot in the city of Chicago, people are killed in the city of Chicago, and maybe, just maybe, ambulance services being deployed automatically via the shot spotter system could have saved their lives. But it's not going to happen anymore because Brandon Johnson has decided that his voting base, which by the way, is in these 12 most violent areas is not to be subjected to any kind of scrutiny for these murders for these crimes because that would just be evil white racism but one of the things that i find absolutely absurd and disgusting is the fact that brandon johnson still is trying to play like he gives a damn about any of these people he's asking businesses to come up with alternatives to shot spotter as he terminates it kills it in the middle of the night post the dnc because he thinks it's on them to provide solutions for this rather than on the citizens to actually act like decent people and call 911 or on him as the mayor to keep this system in place because his citizens don't act like decent people who call 911. Now look, while I'm often critical of the talking point of you voted for this, you get what you vote for and all that, the fact of the matter is, unlike in New York City where they ended up voting for the now indicted Mayor Eric Adams, who was the toughest on crime among all the candidates in the Democratic primary, Brandon Johnson was actually woker than Lori Lightfoot, and the citizens of Chicago after ousting Lightfoot had an opportunity to pick a different candidate that would have taken the city in a potentially different direction. However, these very neighborhoods, the same high crime areas that in other cities have voted for the most tough on crime candidate, voted for Brandon Johnson in the city of Chicago. So yes, they did in fact vote for this. These are the consequences that they ended up asking for, but that still doesn't make it acceptable behavior and he should still be held accountable because the overwhelming majority of the representatives of the Chicago City Council actually wanted to keep this, actually were aligned with the citizens, and Brandon Johnson just decided, no, I happen to have escaped a veto-proof majority by just one vote, so I'm gonna get rid of this, but I'm also going to mock people mock the dead, mock my idiotic citizens that voted me into power by saying that I'm still looking for uh, any kind of technology that could, you know, somehow spot gunshots. If only there was some kind of spotter that we could install in Chicago to detect these gunshots, you know, these shots, you know, get the, get the shots spotted, then maybe, just maybe, I would be in favor of that as he laughs directly in the face of the murder victims of the city of Chicago. It's only going to get worse as time goes on, but this is what these people actually did vote for but even though that happens to be the case it is important to fight back it is important to not let democrats destroy all these different various cities because these cities are also american cities not just democrat cities but you know what i want to know what you guys think down in the comments below if you like the video show by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on the social medias support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about brandon johnson allowing chaos to reign supreme in chicago till next time